Daniels, he's going to keep. He's going to walk into the end zone. Oh. Uh, here comes one to the cup. Woo! Left hand layup good. Kansas is the 2023 WNIT champions. This is the Jayhawker Podcast, presented by the University of Kansas Health System. Well, back here for another edition of the Jayhawker Podcast. We are joined by our quarterback. Jalen Daniels, Wayne Simeon. As always, I am Greg Gurley here on the podcast brought to you by the University of Kansas Health System. Jalen, welcome. It's the springtime. Spring football is upon us. The spring showcase is upon us here in a couple of days. Yes, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank I you. I want you to kind of recap last year. It was mm. a magical year. Mm. You were amazing. It was up and down simply yeah. because of an injury, but talk about those first five games and how special it was in Lawrence, Kansas. It was wonderful, honestly. You know, I I don't think I've ever had a feeling like that before. Uh, you know, walking around campus. I mean, you know, first first semester actually having in person classes for every single one of my classes since COVID. Uh, so you know, walking around campus, you know, being able to get that love, and then you know, coming to the booth to a packed stadium was always good too. Well, you know, you brought it up. COVID. You've been here. It's your fourth year. Been here and and. You had to go through COVID. You had to go through a coaching change. You had to go through multiple offensive coordinators, a couple of coaches. Just talk about your journey and how difficult it was for all of us. Yeah. But as a young person, you, you come to Kansas, you think, you're, hey, it's going to be great, and then you're relegated to your dorm room and to your quarterback <laughs> room, and there's no fans. And Just talk about how satisfying last year was after everything you went through. Yeah, I mean, you know, coming in at 17 years old, especially on a COVID year, it, it wasn't the easiest the, it's the easiest transition to make. I mean, um, I went from, you know, in January of 2020 being ready to go to prom, ready for graduation, to not having neither one of those things. Right. So um, that was hard for me because um, me and my mom, it was something that we've, you know, been planning for a very long time. But, um, you know, they were able to send me off right to college in June. And, um, you know, once I got here, it was kind of – it was kind of like hard because I was ready to get to work. Like I was ready to go in the weight room and all of that stuff, but they had to take the COVID protocols into consideration, you know, do all this and all that yeah. for even to allow us to be able to go work out in the weight room and all of that yeah. stuff. So, I mean, it was hard for me my freshman year. Didn't really get a, a fall camp per se because uh, it was canceled halfway because right. of COVID protocols. And then, you know, my freshman year, there was a lot of there was a lot of learning experiences from that year. And, sure. You know, definitely some stuff that I, were, I was able to take into the next year and be able to, you know, be able to keep growing and developing myself as a quarterback. But, um, you know, going into this past season, you know, we felt like we we felt like we knew where, where our feet were. We felt like we knew what we were coming into the season with. So, you know, it was kind of a surprise to a lot of people. But for us, it was kind of like, you know. We, we knew what we were doing during the spring ball. We knew what we were doing during fall camp. And, you know, going into this season, you know, now we're just trying to be able to sustain what we was able to do at the beginning of the year and don't be able to fall off. Yeah, I love what you said there about uh, the fast 5-0 and start, college game day being there, the sellouts, how that wasn't a surprise to you guys because yeah. you had been building, preparing, and working towards that. What were some of those key areas that you guys excelled at in that preparation process that helped you to know that, hey, this isn't a surprise us getting off to this start, and then how are you building upon that this spring? Yeah, I mean, um, at first, I, I feel like it just goes from, you know, being able to see where our program was first when Coach Leipold got here and then to be able to see where it was going into his first spring. You know, it was night and day. You know, we were able to see the amount of collaboration that we were able to do as a team, the amount of respect that we have for our coaches. And, you know, being able to realize that, you know, every every moment is a learning moment. Every moment is a teaching moment. Not everything is going to be glitz and glamorous, but it, everything is really based off how you're able to respond to, to what's going on because – at the end of the day, adversity is going to strike at some point. Let's be yeah. honest. Well, hey, and you certainly had a chance to live that um, in terms of in terms of battling through adversity, in terms of the glitz and glamour, kind of wearing off on the other side of college game day uh, with the injury. So tell us what that process was like uh, in terms of. Uh, obviously, the, the the mental battle and struggle it was uh, being taken out that game, and yeah. then seeing your team maybe take a little bit of dip in in terms of uh, its its uh, productivity in the win column. Uh, 
at the same time preparing to get back for the end of the season and then of course having a uh, an epic bowl performance yeah i mean it, it was hard man it definitely was i mean it was it was definitely devastating especially for for my mental cause, i mean i'm like with five and oh first college game day finally going you know trying to be able to come six and oh for the first time and we don't know how long so it was it was like hard because you know, now I don't know when I'm going to be able to play football again. I mean, this is the game that I love. I prepare all year to be able to play just at least these 12 games and, you know, be blessed to be able to play that 13th bowl game. But, you know, it was hard because now I have to find out how to be able to still be a leader but not be there on the field. Like, I have to take a step back and be able to try to still be vocal to the guys and be able to keep on giving them uplift when that's not the easiest thing to do. It's like – it's like, do you think that helped you when you actually got back on the field oh, and were yeah. able to take even more command as you, as QB one? Definitely, because I mean, I feel like, I feel like it just allowed them to be able to know that I was going to come in and try to be able to do what I can with, with, with what I had. You know, I, I wasn't able to be able to go out there and be the same person that I was coming in, but they knew that I was going to be able to go out there and give one hundred percent my all with everything that I had. So we got a ball coach now, Lance Leipold and his staff. You were here for one year with the previous regime. I want to hear your view of, of what changed. Like, what did Lance and his staff, what did they bring to the table? And the continuity has to be so great for you because you started out, you, you have had, what, three different coordinators now? Mm -hmm. But Andy's back as, you know, he's your guy. Yeah. And, and we signed all, I believe, nine of our assistant coaches all came back. There's n there was no change how nice is that to have yeah I mean it's definitely beautiful because you know it allows it allows us to be able to keep on elaborating on a playbook that we already know right. the more that we're able to move away from the basics of that offense and being able to keep on developing little stuff little glitz and glamours to be able to throw the defense off it allows us to be able to make it make more explosive plays and with coach K he does a good job of being able to distribute the ball to all of the athletes that we have on our team I mean there's a lot of guys out there that want the ball and we're hungry for it and what sets Lance Leipold apart? Um, I feel like it. They when they got here, they they set out the guideline. I mean, like, um, you know, they put a lot on us to be able to become a player led team. But they didn't just say, "All right, here, we need you guys to become player led." They were giving us the tools the whole entire yeah. way that they've been, the whole entire time that they've been here. You know, it started from the beginning. It wasn't. It was never too much. They always just kept on giving us little by little. To and and it was a tough beginning because that. Timing wise, it was what it was. It was not till like April or May. Yeah. I mean, it was right in the middle. It was, it was yeah, an no after spring, spring no spring ball. Was that no spring yeah. ball? Yeah. No so ball that me. that had to be different. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we got them. We were only able to get a fall camp with them. So right. imagine trying to learn a whole offense that they're just now coming back from 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 the University of Buffalo and men coming to KU to try to be able to redo everything. Like right. we we had to run a lot of basic stuff because. We didn't have that much time to be able to go over everything right. like everybody else did in the spring. Right. It's interesting that you mentioned now you guys can build on an offensive playbook in a way that gives you more explosive plays. Like It's hard for me to imagine there's more explosive <laughs> plays out there for you guys to accomplish as dynamic of a group that you guys were. And even thinking about that um, in the duration of last year and then, of course, uh, the crazy bowl game, my, my 13-year-old son, who, who's, a, who's a big fan of yours, uh, we went to several football games together, and several of those games, we, we got down multiple touchdowns. Yeah. And one of the more inspiring things as a dad, but then also a fan, is understanding your ability to not quit, not get down on yourself, to fight back, to show resiliency and grit time and time again is so inspirational. And so what is that? Wh wh where does that come from, from you as a leader? And then what does that mean to you when you know you've got younger generations yeah. like looking up to you, not necessarily because of your ability to throw the ball or run fast, and we know you can do those things, but just because of the inspiration that you provide in not giving up? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things that go into that. Number one, it would be you never know when your last time is going to be. Like, that TCU injury could have been my last time ever playing football again. But, you know, you never know. So I, I go out there every single play and try to give my all like it is my last play. Um, so, you know, you just try to go out there and be as resilient as you can, no matter how far you're down or how far you're up. In my career, I, there's been some times where – there's been some times where we were really down, and I had to realize that it doesn't matter how far you're down. You're getting another rep. You're focusing on getting better right now to better yourself for the future. So – 
every single play that I get and that I'm blessed to be able to, you know, go out there and play, I take in consideration that I, I, I need to use this play in order to get better, especially with, to the heights and endeavors that I want to be able to get to. Well, in that early string last year, 5-0, and you were the talk of the town. You were the talk of the country. Obviously, college game day came here, ended up coming back and playing in the bowl game. You were fantastic. But this offseason, with the way that college football, college athletics as a whole, a lot of movement and, what, and whatnot, you decided to stay, build. How cool is it? it how much of that come into your mind that, hey, I saw how good it could be last year and I know how great it can be next year. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> I made a decision to come here as a, as a when I, I think when I was 16, I didn't, hadn't even turned 17 yet, I made the decision to be able to, be able to want to come here. So, you know, I didn't come here for no reason. And, you know, we're finally on the path that a lot of people in my class, the class of 2020 that got here, were envisioning. Like, oh, we went 0-9 our freshman year. That wasn't the ideal thing, but we had to take that step in order to be able to take the next stepping stone and get to where we wanted to go. So, you know, it's just a blessing to be able to see that everything that we've been doing since we've gotten here has only been on the uprising. You know, Wayne and I have been around a long time, so we've seen Kansas football really, really bad. Then we saw an uptick, and then it goes down. And, and the, the guys that were a part of the rebuild are revered. You know, we talk about the, the Todd Reesings and the Brandon McAndersons, and you're going to be that guy. What – last year was great. And we were – what makes this upcoming season? What what are you? What you guys are at full scholarship limits. You got guys. You got a hundred and some odd out for football now, which the numbers are amazing. People want to be a part of this. What this? What will this year's team? How much better will this year's team be than last year, and why? Um, you know, the I, I said it after the Arkansas game. You know, we were able to have that season that we had, but we also raised our standards from that two and ten team. And as we went six and seven, those aren't the standards anymore either. We keep raising the standards. The, the more that we're able to do as a program, the further and further we're going to keep, you know, moving those standards because in, in life, who, who, <laughs> whose goal is to stay exactly where they are? Right. Everybody wants wow. to be able to keep on making progress, yeah, whether it be steadily or even if it moves faster. That's a winner's answer is what that is right there. You don't ever want to just be here. You want to keep climbing. I love it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's great. One of the things I also love is when – when quarterbacks who obviously get uh, a significant bulk of the limelight, much deserved, uh, they're the face of the program, but you have a lot of key significant people around helping your success. Brag about your O-line for a little <laughs> bit, whether it's uh, Earl Bostic, who did a fantastic job, who's going to go on, uh, just finish up with a great pro day, who's going to go on to be drafted to play on Sundays, you're going to be cheering for him on Sundays, and then even some of the returners and some of the new guys that's been added to the guys in the trenches that are so important for your and the team's success. Yeah, for one, we're not doing anything without those guys up front, and whether it be you know from the passing standpoint or the running standpoint. We, we need those guys to be able to create some push up there for the running, and you know we also need those guys to be able to allow for those receivers to be able to get past those, def those defenders. One thing that we tell our receivers is you guys are not trying to beat the cornerback guys are trying to beat the defensive line and our offensive line does a great job of you know being able to allow me to be able to sit there back there drink some coffee you know watch some tv <laughs> <laughs> and be, uh, being able to you know launch the ball down the field eight seconds later so um you know definitely a big shout out to those to those guys we got guys like dominic booney got guys like bryce cable do we got michael ford that's in those trenches amaje adams reed we had earl bostic last year and then you know we got that guy that's in the middle mike Navisky. he's always going to be able to be the guy who's calling the shots and being able to you know call the calls that I need to make pre-snap before I even make them. You know, you talked about the offensive line. Now talk about your skill, guys. Talk about the receivers and your running backs. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Like, like we seen last year, there was a lot of guys who were able to make plays with the ball in their hand. I mean, you know, for, for, for instance, we have our receivers, you know, who, who were making a lot of plays last year. Um, Quinn Skinner, Luke Grimm, O.J. Arnold. Those were a lot of guys who, you know, when the ball was in their hands, you were able to see them make those explosive plays. And then we have we have a, a stallion of running backs in that room. Yeah. I mean, um, we have uh, Savion Morrison. We got Devin Neal. We got Daniel Highshaw. We got uh, McDuffie. We got some freshmen coming in. We also have, you know, Tory Lachlan still, still back there. T-Lock. He's T -Lock. my favorite, man. <laughs> T-Lock, man. He, he done put the work in for a lot of years. Uh, multiple positions. Oh, yeah. He's the type of guy that's like, hey, whenever and wherever you need me to do anything, put me in and I'm going to be how ready. How is, is Daniel Highshaw? 
I mean, he's doing good, you know. Nothing, nothing making but steadily, steady progression. Right, right. Um, you know, doing his best to be able to try to get to where he wants to get. And uh, how about this? You mentioned uh, your center. Big, you know, I call him Dirk, but Nowitzki, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, talk, talk about that relationship because – both you guys have to be the smartest guys on the offensive side of the ball. You've got your particular reads. He has his particular reads. Yeah. There's communication between you two. There's communication between the offensive line. You're communicating to the folks on the edges. Like, how does that relationship work? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, me and Dirk are pretty tight, you know, on the field, of course. But, you know, definitely off the field. You know, we, we have our conversations. I mean, we, we, we're, you know – we're able to have those those conversations that you know people really don't want to have on a general basis. So um, I feel like you know, one thing that me and Dirk always say to each other is you know it doesn't matter what we do as long as we're all on the same page. So you know if I do make this call and he sees something different, we're gonna ride with it. If he if he makes this call and he sees that, I have the ability to trumpet or something like that. But I have so much faith in Dirk that he's making the right call that the offense is still gonna be able to run around with what we're doing. Yeah, so there's a big trust factor that's, oh, definitely. Uh, that's woven trust, in there. And trust is definitely – it, it has to be there because if you don't have trust with him, it's ugly. And then tell us about the trust that you have to have with your coordinators and, and, and quarterback coach because, you know, you're so gifted and talented as a dual-threat quarterback, right? You can make it happen with your arm. You can make it happen with your feet. What are the, like, the check-down processes that you have going on in your mind where it's like, okay – Nothing's really developed at this moment. I can use my feet and try to get it going. Or, hey, just be a little bit more patient, trust the play, trust my receivers, trust my O-line, and then make something happen more in the context of the offense. Like, how does that work as a dual-threat quarterback? What, what type of, of patience and trust do you have to have in those moments? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I have all trust in Coach K and him being able to make the right calls at the right time. You know, whatever play that he calls, I'm going to go out there and run it like it's the best play ever. That's one thing that, you know, Coach Z, our quarterback coach, uh, puts puts a big emphasis on. You know, no matter what play is called, it no matter if it's an inside zone and it's, you're lined up a receiver and it has nothing to do with you, you're going to go out there and run it like it's you the best play You got me wanting to go ever. play Madden right now. After <laughs> this right now, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, I mean, you know, as for the, you know, should I run or t should I take the check down, I'm always going to try to make the decision that I feel is best for the team and – that also just goes with going with your gut. Sometimes it's not about overthinking it. You overthink, you might end up making that wrong decision. But Coach K wants us quarterbacks to be able to go with our gut decision. And once you make that decision, do it. Like, there's no hesitation. As long as you do it 100%, the only negative outcome is you not doing what you're doing 100%. Because you can make a negative play off of that. Nearing the end of spring ball here, Friday night, you're going to have the spring showcase. Take, us, take the fan base through what they're going to see at David Booth Memorial Stadium on Friday night. You're going to see a lot of defensive guys roll, uh, running around, I'll tell you that much. I mean, that defensive side of the ball has been doing nothing but making progression all spring. I mean, there's a lot of guys on that side of the ball that you're, you're going to hear some names that you heard from last year, but you're definitely going to hear some names where, you know, it's like, okay, okay. Give, give, us, give us some of those names. Um, you know, at that linebacker position, we have, you know, guys who are, you know, guys who just got here. J.B. Brown, he's coming in with a head full of steam wherever he goes, you know. Whether it be try to, you know, just – to protect the edge or if it's trying to come in and try to sack the quarterback, you know, he, he's going to run in with his, with his head on fire, and that's something that we love to see. You know, our DBs, OJ, Melo, um, and Kobe, you know, they've been doing nothing but making progressions as well. They're going to try to test me, and I'm going to keep on trying to test them every single day. And I would imagine the depth of the defense and the offense is, is greater. I mean, as we add, add guys and people stick, we didn't really lose that much, but we have a lot coming back and a lot of new guys. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And so you've almost become accustomed now since this last year of when you go into the booth, man, expecting that thing to be packed and, uh, and, and folks there. Uh, I'd imagine your expectation hasn't changed for what we have coming up on Friday night. And so, uh, man, give a little shout out to our fans, our alumni base, our, our, our season ticket holders to make sure that they, they, they come out and show up on, on Friday night. Oh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do it, man. Pack the booth, April 7th, 7 p.m. We are out there, and we're going to be showing the world exactly what we about to preview for this upcoming season. Let's do it in Rock Chalk. You know, and then like Wayne said, you've, you've been, been here through COVID. It was limited capacity, all that. And you had a, a rough year, and the crowds weren't there. But how much did that mean to you guys when there were three straight sellouts? Because you know what an amazing atmosphere that can be, the setting there at the bottom of the hill. But how cool was that, and how much – 
energy and adrenaline that pump into you guys? It pumps a lot of adrenaline, adrenaline into you. I mean, you're walking out and you see a crowd in your stadium that you haven't seen in a while. I mean, you know, we have guys like last year, we had guys like Kenny Logan who have been here for a minute, who's coming back this year. I mean, we had a lot of guys who were leaving, like Sam Burr, Malcolm Lee. Um, these are guys who have been here for a while. And, you know, the fact that we were able to send them off on their last year, three sold-out packed booths in a, in a row, you know, they, they were able to leave with that taste and be able to say that they left a brick here. Yeah, and even with that, quick shout-out, hey, season tickets are on sale. And so as you're hearing from our QB1 about the work that they're putting in and the excitement uh, that's to come for this upcoming season, uh, make sure you go to KansasAthletics.com, tap into those season tickets, and uh, make sure we keep that booth filled up for these tap guys. Into and to piggyback what Wayne said, our, our fan base has always told us, well, we're waiting for a better product. Well, the wait's over. The better product is there. You have no excuses. Tickets aren't that expensive. $450 a ticket. We've got all levels. The family zone. Come out and support. We just heard what it means to our guys and our coaches it, it, it's just different. It helps all sports at Kansas when other sports are bringing recruits in. When the booth is packed, it's better for everybody. And, and those three games last year, not just those three games, the other games were great as well. They weren't sellouts like those yeah. when we were on the run. But, man, college game day, people said it was the best atmosphere they've ever had. Now, maybe they say that every week. They go <laughs> yeah, who knows? We'll take it, though. But we'll, yeah, take yeah, it, we'll take it. We'll take it. And we'll record it. And we'll play it. Hey, best <laughs> atmosphere ever. But, again, it has to do wonders for everybody. The continuity is there with all of our coaches coming back. So many guys come back that had – everybody's got an opportunity to leave now. But they want to build. Devin Neal, Lawrence kid, at one of the best players in the country. Everybody has that chance. But you guys all banded together and said, hey, we want to be a part of something great. Well – Appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to Friday night. Yes, sir. Uh, Wayne and I will be there. We might even uh, paint our chests or something. You want to do that? Nah, nah, nah. Friday night might, might be a little oh, too chilly for that cold out. I definitely I'll say that for when game day runs. Okay, when runs game day yeah, comes so, back, you yeah. heard that here. Be in the booth with it. Jay Ocker Podcast, uh, also brought to you by the Hilton President downtown. Go see our man, Philip Stranod, if you're going down for a concert. Big 12 tournament, anything just steps away from the power and light. The Hilton president downtown. We've had Jalen Daniels. Yes, sir. EMOC here in Lawrence. Another great year coming up. Appreciate the time. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Rock it. Chalk. Rock Chalk. Jay Hawker Podcast. Rock Chalk, you know it. Jay Hawker Podcast brought to you by the University of Kansas Health System. I had this patient. His cancer treatment had him in the hospital for a while. One day... He was telling me about his grandson and how a big night was coming up for him. So we arranged to make it a big night for my patient too. I sometimes wonder if I'm doing all I can. Then I help make a moment like this possible, and I know I am. Well, back here on the Jay Ocker Podcast, just had Jalen Daniels on with Wayne and I, and he was great. Got the spring showcase coming up here on Friday. Uh, not your prototypical spring football game. It's going to be a little bit different, kind of like all schools are doing now. But we'll be able to showcase our guys. And Jalen talked to us. He's excited about the defense. Obviously, we know what we have on offense, Jalen and all the skill guys. Great offensive line depth but he talked a lot about the defense so show up friday for the spring showcase wayne and i'll be there and hopefully you will too yeah i'm excited to be there i know he was talking about uh, how the offense is able to build off of the playbook that was so effective for him last year to have some more explosive plays not sure we'll see a lot of that yeah. in terms of uh those new plays of course you don't want to put all your stuff out there on film i uh, want to make sure guys stay healthy but also uh, want to make sure that you're able to give the fans a preview of what to expect, uh, especially with, uh, with season tickets on sale. And it'll be a chance to see our team for the first time since December 27th when we had that epic Liberty Bowl game. Unfortunately, ended in a loss, but got so many people excited about what's to come. So he talked about how the adrenaline and the energy and how much it pumped them up when our fan base showed up in record numbers, three games in a row. So Friday night, 
show up, spring showcase. Uh, had a big day around here uh, when you're looking at uh, Kansas basketball. You know, obviously we end the season uh, a disappointing finish against Arkansas, but uh, Bill Self, uh, his health and everything has been a question for the last two or three weeks, and all of those questions were answered today. And Wayne and I were just joking about how many guys and, and men, women, whatever, wherever Wayne goes to dinner in Lawrence or I'm in Kansas City and everybody's smarter than us, obviously. <laughs> I got an inside source. I got this. I know this guy. It's done. And this is not a, a, a bragging statement, but Wayne and I are as, as ingrained as anybody in the so-called inner circle and we don't necessarily know that much, but we know more than the guys that come up to me and Wayne and tell me they got a great source. Is that an accurate statement? Uh, you're not wrong. Thank you. You love, you love that term <laughs> when I say you're not wrong. But, you know, to end all the suspense as I ramble on here, Bill Self is not retiring. He's not moving to Florida. He is the University of Kansas men's basketball coach for next season's and many many more seasons he said I didn't realize you know there was a couple of questions like you know when you were out did it did, did it make you think about retirement and he goes no it made me think that I wanted to coach even more being out made me realize what I was missing so it did the exact opposite it made him want to be here longer yeah no and I think that was uh, the best outcome that anyone could hope uh, from, you know, what was a, a very scary and uncertain scenario uh, when it came uh, yeah. to, to his health episode uh, that he had there. And now, uh, even physically, he looked great. He sounded great. Uh, he, he, was had a, that, he had that quick wit. He had oh, the yeah. quick, yeah. You know, sharp, was as energized. Bit of a smart ass at times. Oh, all that. All that. Dry. He was uh, but, yeah, you know, we know him as well as anybody, and it, and it, was, it was frustrating. It was, and it was scary. And it was one of those things that you've got to get yourself right. And then that, you know, through the help of the University of Kansas Health System was amazing. He mentioned them in the press conference about the team of doctors that he has here and down at the med center it was amazing. And, and, you know, he spent four days there. And so it's appropriate that it's the Jay Ucker podcast brought to you by the <laughs> University of Kansas Health System. And, and, and it, it, I wouldn't say it worked out perfectly because he wasn't able to coach those final five games. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating to our fan base, frustrating to him. But when it comes to your well-being and your health, that's his business. Anybody that says, well, he should, he should tell, you know, give us updates every day. He doesn't have to do anything. This is his life. And he did what he thought was right. And he addressed the media today. And I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought a great outcome also uh, from that isn't just that he's going to be back and is as committed as ever uh, to, to continuing to lead this program, but he's also as committed as he ever has been to his own health and well-being, uh, which, is, which is important and something, you know, that we could all, you know, benefit and learn from in terms sure. of, uh, of self-care and, and uh, managing stress and, you know, what we eat and exercising regularly, and so it's great. Uh, to be able to see that be something that he emphasized in that moment that just isn't unique to him, uh, but that can also be something that, that we all can, can learn from and, and be coached by in him. And I think he's invigorated and excited about next year. And there's a lot of question marks. And to all the people that come to me and Wayne and say, well, gosh, you know, we only got four guys coming back and four freshmen. What are we going to do? And my answer to every single one of those, I'm saying, okay, Bill's been here for 20 years. This isn't the first time this has happened where we don't have many guys coming back and we're losing a large percentage of our scoring. How do you not trust Bill Self to continue the excellent record and, and history that he's amassed in these last 20? What has he done in those 20 years to make you not believe him? And that shuts him up pretty quick. Is that your answer as well? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, even, even the – you know, when I think about it, like, wow, man, there's still uh, a lot of ground to be covered in terms of recruiting and filling the gaps in the portal and, hey, knowing if, you know, Kevin's going to be back or what, what the case is. And I think one thing that really helped me in that is if I needed help 
to the to your point there of his track record of doing that for years and years and years is that he enjoys it and has the most fun when things are the most difficult and when the odds are stacked against well, he's them. competitive. Yeah. And what do competitors want? They want to be they challenged. They want those moments, yeah. They, they want, want to be moments. challenged. You don't, you, me and you didn't grow up playing against scrubs. We grew up playing against guys that were better than us. So, therefore, we had to elevate our game. So, there's question marks right now. He likes that. He's a competitor. Norm, KT, Jeremy, Brennan, Brady, Joe, they're like that too. And their whole team is up there right now. Have you been up to the new offices? The, the war room. <laughs> so right now the, the men's basketball offices are being redone. So they're gutted. And there's, what is there, seven of them in a conference room. So all with these, you know, Costco tables and a, and a computer screen. Coach up there. has his own room. Kind he, of, yeah, yeah, he got a he, prima donna got his own office, <laughs> but uh, uh, but it's it's funny to watch them. They're gonna they're gonna kill each other here in three or four months. But the new offices are gonna be are gonna be really really nice. And 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 April and May used to be time that you had a little bit of time to relax. Maybe you know get the guys that are coming back do some more workouts, which they'll do. But now there aren't high schoolers out there like going, huh, wonder where I'm going to go to college. High school kids have already decided that with the exception of, of uh, one of the game's best kids is out there still is unsigned, but uh, who knows where he's going to go. Uh, I, I probably can't mention him by name, but I think everybody knows who I'm talking about. But it's transfer portal, and the transfer portal's got over 500 names in it now. And so for us to go out and find four guys probably – it's going to be transfers unless there's an international player that I don't know about or, but, but it's probably going to be someone that you watched in the NCAA tournament or you watched throughout the year. And you're like, Oh, I remember that guy from whatever. That's what they're doing right now. And it's just different. Yeah. And it's an uphill battle too, uh, with the timetable and window that's closing as well. As you think about the timetable of the portal closing, then of course the timetable of the guys uh, who have to decide if they're going to continue in the NBA draft or if they're going to come uh, back. And so that's a great uh, point. That's it, the other unknown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it is kind of a, I don't necessarily want to use the word stressful in light of coach's episode to put more stressful yeah. on them, but there is a, a sense of urgency in terms of reaching out to these guys, recruiting the portal, and then also giving consideration to guys that might be choosing to come back for their collegiate experience. Well, you think about it. I mean, think about how many times Roy Williams went to see you play and talk to you. Years of recruitment. You're talking about now, you're talking about a, a week or maybe several days where you're going to meet a kid, meet his family. They say they want to come, and you got to be like, okay. And that could be great. It could backfire. It's a very, very small window to get to know somebody and to know if they really fit, but that's reality. And it's probably extremely overwhelming for the student athlete. As you're thinking about those small windows, your name hits the portal, and now you've got dozens of schools reaching out to you all at once wanting to know if you're interested, let alone wanting to come on campus to go through the recruiting experience. Uh, and so it could be a lot to vet in a short amount of time. And so it's a lot of work for everybody. But ultimately, it's, uh, it's the, the world we live in now. And uh, I'm sure we'll be reeling in some, uh, some great new talent moving into the 23-24 season. And if we look at what we need, you know, we look at the guys that are coming in. We know what's coming in, the four freshman high schoolers, which are basically three guards and a four-man. Uh, if you look at what's coming back, what's coming in, and then what we need. No, J Well, it hadn't been officially announced about Jalen Wilson or Kevin McCuller, but we're both pretty confident that we won't see them next year. And Grady already announced his intentions, and Bill addressed it in the press conference. For anybody out there that thinks it's a bad decision for Grady, you're crazy. I'm surprised he didn't make the announcement on our podcast. I mean, he chose to do it on ESPN with Perk. and So here's not. the question. Hey, Grady. You want to fly to Los Angeles, be on worldwide television, or be with a couple of guys like Wayne and Greg. Grady, I think you made the right decision, even though we're, we're very upset with you. But, uh, but Bill addressed it in the press conference. He's like, he's going to, in the mock drafts right now, I say he goes anywhere from 8 to 15. The bunny is ridiculous. And he's still in a position to elevate his draft stock. As he goes into workouts, teams, and yeah. he went through all that, and, and there's, a, there's a chance that, 
you get even better. And so he made the right decision. All of you experts out there that know that Bill Self was retiring, you know that <laughs> Grady should come back for one or two more years. Just, I know, and, and and most people that say that they're saying that with their their heart, in that they're Kansas fans and they want to see them back. It's a I don't know, selfish probably in the right word, but it's kind of a selfish way to look at it. You got to look at it. What's best for Bill Self? What's best for Grady Dick? It's not what's best for Joe Fan. That sounds bad. Fans are important, but at some point you got to make decisions. Yeah, everyone's got their own emotional investment to varying degrees in uh, in and around Kansas athletics, you know, and, and basketball especially. So I, I get that. So a lot that's going to happen. I mean, this next year's Kansas basketball team will be shaped in the next month, right? Yeah. It's going to have to be because we're already here uh, early April. It's, it's It probably needs to be done by, what, mid-May at the, at the latest. So, and, 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 and the, other, the, the other factor will be, I think right now the only possible maybe to come back would be Kevin McCuller. And I put that at about – Eight and a half percent. It certainly seems like they're leaning that way. Uh, but it is nice to say, as you talked about that window closing, I need to get it done by mid-May. Well, the new rules, or I guess they're not, they're not new rules. It's been out for a while. But uh, the summertime is going to be even more important as you get a significant number of guys being added to your roster. In what ways can you use the workout periods, which is only – six to eight hours, you know, at times in June and July to be able to accelerate the learning process, the camaraderie process. So Chemistry. as you go into uh, October, uh, you're not laboring to build those things. And so it's going to be a big summer, not just recruiting wise, but once those guys get on the campus in June, uh, it's going to be very, very important to, to maximize the time that they do have together on the court, even though it's minimal in um, in those 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 hour limitations. Another possibility, um, I'm not 100 percent sure it's going to happen, is a foreign trip. Every four years, you're allowed to take a foreign tour. And five, six years ago, because of COVID, it would normally be every four years. But can't, I think it was 17 or 18. We went to uh, Italy, and that was a great trip where guys got to. You know, there's chemistry, there's camaraderie, there's practice time, even more practice time than what Wayne mentioned, which is the six or eight hours a week. When you go on a foreign tour, you're able to do that. So that could be something that will be utilized this year. We haven't announced that, but that could be. I don't know that to be final. But uh, that's your recap on Kansas basketball. Bill Self will be the basketball coach here moving forward. He will find some transfers. He will be back, have his team back in the top, I'm going to go top 15, the way too early. Too early. Way, 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 way Top 25 has Kansas as a top 10 team. <laughs> and Bill was asked that today, and he's like, we got four guys coming back. Who we votes on this? We can't even check this? ball. We can't even we, check ball right now. <laughs> so, but that's, luckily they're called the way too early or the way too dumb, whatever you want to say. Since we've been here, the Kansas women's basketball team won a championship. The WNIT champs knocked off Columbia last Saturday, and 11,000 fans showed up. Awesome at atmosphere. You got to sit and watch it as a fan. You didn't have to broadcast it. I saw you with Nikki B on TV, and how cool was it for those girls and Brandon Snyder to have that atmosphere in Allen Field? Oh, it was, it was great. It was great, and the crowd support uh, was fantastic, as it has been all through the WNITs. We hosted all of those games, but, of course, the culmination was the championship game, which we had hosted before, uh, but it's all for naught unless you win the whole thing. Right. And it was so fantastic for – that coaching staff and those girls to be able to to get a, a gritty win over over a Colum that Columbia team was tough. You know, a they lot really of people were. looked and saw the name Ah Columbia Ivy League mid major like a it's first gonna round. Be, it's going to be a blowout. Yeah. Like it, there was good. a reason why they were in the championship game, they and we, we we quickly saw that. Um, it, and then the, the the drama of Tiana Jackson the ankle rolling and her going off the court and the air kind of being let out of the room there, and then her return and so many big plays to kind of close that game out. We really and, didn't pull away till about mid to late third quarter. Yeah. I mean, it was a back and forth lead changing every couple minutes, but awesome atmosphere, great win. We'll help them into next year to hopefully 
create a new fan base moving forward for Kansas women's basketball. And a real quick question for you is because they experienced something that very few people get a chance to see, let alone do, and that's cut down nets in in historic Allen Fieldhouse. When your teams were part of kind of the Big 12 championship teams, did you did you guys cut down nets? Oh, man, I don't think we ever did in Allen Fieldhouse. Uh, we won – Three out of my four years, the tie, the regular season title. That's a good question. Yeah, I know we went to the Final Four in in '93, and we cut down the nets in St. Louis. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. We have been consistently able to have championship games in Allen Fieldhouse from a conference level, but not one that ends in April. Right. And those girls and that coaching staff got a chance. It's to a do lifelong something. memory. Yeah, that's, very special. You never take um, it away from them. Awesome accomplishment, and again, it'll it'll spur them on to next year. Yeah. A lot of a lot of that team is coming back. Pretty much most. Yeah, of a couple them. big announcements. Tyana Jackson's coming back. She just announced earlier this week. Um, Zakai Franklin's going to be coming back. I'd imagine that we'd have uh, some other starters uh, returning as well. So that core is going to be staying together. And again, like you mentioned, that momentum is going to keep building for that program. Kansas Athletics recap: The men's baseball teams had a nice little run. Beat Creighton. Last week, swept Baylor here in Lawrence, beat, uh, I believe, Missouri State last night. So, it's been a good week for Coach Fitz and the and the guys. Uh, what else we got? Kansas Relays coming up next week. Uh, we're going to have uh, Coach Byers on with us to talk about the Kansas Relays and re- resurrecting that after five years Five-year hiatus, COVID and other factors, but uh, he's been tasked to bring that back, and over 3,000 athletes will be out at Rock Chalk Park next week. Yeah, lots of exciting things coming down the pipe this spring. So the Jayhawker Podcast brought to you by the Hilton President Hotel downtown Kansas City. Stay and play package. Give Philip Stranat a call. Steps away from the power and light and the T-Mobile Center as we've got concerts and everything coming up. President Hotel is a great landing spot. It's our landing spot. The drum room, everything about it, renovated rooms, home of Kansas basketball during the Big 12 tournament. So the President Hotel, downtown Kansas City. The Jacker Podcast brought to you by the University of Kansas Health System. Big week spring showcase in a couple days. Kansas relays next week. Good times, buddy. Yeah, see you there, bub. See you at the Spring Showcase. This is the Jacker Podcast, University of Kansas Health System, Rock Chalk.